to go candidate Eisenhower met Senator McCarthy in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and he laid down some ground rules on how he would fight communism if elected. Now, this is a pledge that I make. If I am charged by you people to be the responsible head of the executive department, it will be my initial responsibility to see that subversion, disloyalty is kept out of the department. We will always appreciate and welcome congressional investigation, but the responsibility will rest squarely on the shoulders of the executive. And I hold that there are already ample powers in the government to get rid of these people if the executive department is really concerned in doing it. We can do it absolute assurance. That, Amer that, American, that American principle of uh, trial by jury of the innocent until proved guilty are all observed, and I expect to do it. That same night in Milwaukee, Senator McCarthy stated what he would do if the general was elected. I spent about half an hour with the general last night. Well, I can't, well, I can't report that we agreed entirely on everything. <laughs> 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 I can, I can report that when I left that meeting with the general, I had the same feeling as when I went in, and that is that he's a great American, will make a great president, an outstanding president. But I want to tell you tonight, tell the American people, as long as I represent you and the rest of the American people in the South, I shall continue to call as I see, regardless of who happens to be president. On one thing, the senator has been consistent. Often operating as a one-man committee, he has traveled far, interviewed many, terrorized some, accused civilian and military leaders of the past administration of a great conspiracy to turn over the country to communism, investigated and substantially demoralized the present State Department, made varying charges of espionage at Fort Monmouth. The Army says it has been unable to find anything relating to espionage there. He has interrogated a varied assortment of what he calls Fifth Amendment communists. Republican Senator Flanders of Vermont said of McCarthy today, he dons his war paint, he goes into his war dance, he emits his war hoop, he goes forth to battle and proudly returns with the scalp of a pink army dentist. Other critics have accused the senator of using the bullwhip and the smear. There was a time, two years ago, when the senator and his friends said he had been smeared and bullwhipped. Well, you sometimes think to hear the quartet that call themselves Operation Truth, damning Joe McCarthy and resorting to the vilest smears I've ever heard. Well, this is the answer. And if I could express it in what's in my heart right now, I'd do it in the terms of the poet who once said, Ah, tis but a daisy flower I bring to you. Yes, Tis but a violet, listening with dew, but still in its heart their life unrevealed. You know, I used to... pride myself on the idea that I was a bit tough. Especially over the past 18 or 19 months, and we've been kicked around and bullwhipped and damned. I didn't think that I could be touched very deeply. But tonight, Frankly, my cup and my heart is so full I can't talk to you. But in Philadelphia, on Washington's birthday, 1954, his heart was so full he could talk. He reviewed some of the general's wicker testimony and proved he hadn't abused him. More serious than being a traitor to the country as part of the communist conspiracy. Are you enjoying this abuse of the general? <laughs> uh, question, do you think stealing $50 is more serious than being a traitor to the country 
as part of the communist conspiracy. Answer to that, sir, was not my decision. So we'll go on with that for a while. I hate to impose on your time, but I've just got two pages. This is the abuse with the real meat of the abuse. This is the official report of his record of the hearing. After he said that he wouldn't remove that general from the army who cleared a communist major, I said to him, I said, then, General, you should be removed from any command. Any man who has been given the honor of being promoted to general and who says, I will protect another general who protects communists is not fit to wear that uniform, General. I've But two days later, Secretary Stevens and the Senator had lunch, agreed on a memorandum of understanding, disagreed on what the small type said. I shall never accede to the abuse of Army personnel under any circumstance, including committee hearings. I shall not accede to them being browbeaten or humiliated. In the light of those assurances, although I did not propose the cancellation of the hearing, I acceded to it. If it had not been for these assurances, I would never have entered into any agreement whatsoever. Then President Eisenhower issued a statement that his advisors thought censored the senator. But the senator saw it as another victory, called the entire Zwicker case a tempest in a teapot. Arrogant or witless man in a position of power appears before our committee and is found aiding the Communist Party, he will be exposed the fact that he might be a general places him in no special class as far as I'm concerned. Apparently, apparently the president and I now agree on the necessity of getting rid of communists. We apparently disagree only on how we should handle those who protect communists. When the shouting and the tumult dies, the American people and the president will realize that this unprecedented mud swinging against the committee by the extreme left wing elements of press and radio was caused solely because another Fifth Amendment communist was finally dug out of the dark recesses and exposed to public view. Now, Senator McCarthy claims that only the left wing press criticized him on the Zwicker case. Of the 50 largest circulation newspapers in the country, these are the left wing papers that criticized him. These are the ones that supported him. The ratio is about three to one. Now, let us look at some of these left-wing papers that criticized the senator. The Chicago Tribune. McCarthy will better serve his cause if he learns to distinguish the role of investigator from the role of avenging angel. The New York Times. The unwarranted interference of a demagogue, a domestic Munich. The Times Herald of Washington. Senator McCarthy's behavior towards Zwicker not justified. The Herald Tribune of New York. McCarthyism involves assaults on basic Republican concepts. The Milwaukee Journal. The line must be drawn and defended or McCarthy will become the government. The Evening Star of Washington. It was a bad day for everyone who resents and detests the bully boy tactics which Senator McCarthy so often employs. The New York World Telegram. Bamboozling, bludgeoning, distorting way. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Unscrupulous, McCarthy bullying. What a tragic irony it is that the president's political advisors keep him from doing what every decent instinct must be commanding him to do. A left to ratio, about three to one, so-called left-wing press. Another interesting thing was said about the Zwicker case, and it was said by Senator McCarthy. Well, may I say that I was extremely shocked when I heard that uh, Secretary Stevens told two army officers that they had to take part in the cover-up of those who promoted the Cardo communists. As I read his statement, I uh, thought of that quotation on what meat does this our Caesar feed. And upon what meat does Senator McCarthy feed? Two of the staples of his diet are the investigation, protected by immunity, and the half-truth. We shift at this point from Mr. Murrow's March 9th See It Now to his program the following week, March 16th, in which he featured the hearing of Mrs. Annie Lee Moss from the television record covering the McCarthy Committee. Here, a week later, is Edward R. Morrow. 
On Vietnam, we occasionally use a phrase, a little picture. Tonight, we bring you a little picture of a little woman, Mrs. Annie Lee Moss and the due process of law. Until three weeks ago, Mrs. Moss probably knew very little about Senator McCarthy, General Zwicker, Mr. Cohn, or the other principals engaged in the argument in Washington. Let me attempt to get the chronology of the event straight. On Washington's birthday, February 22, Monday, Senator McCarthy and Secretary of the Army Stevens were in total controversy over the General Zwicker case. Both men spoke in or near Philadelphia that Monday, and both returned to Washington for their big showdown, scheduled for Thursday. But when Senator McCarthy arrived back in Washington later that afternoon, he had some added news for the country and the Army and Secretary Stevens. It was the lead story right across the country. The New York Times, for example, said McCarthy asserts he has a new red link to Army. The New York Daily News said, McCarthy called extra hearing. New Army red case on today. The Cincinnati Inquirer. McCarthy to wear new case of known red in Army. The Houston Chronicle. Call Army Code Clerk X Red. Chicago Daily Tribune. Probe new Army red case. My own nightly radio program covered it by saying, Senator McCarthy charged today that the Army now employs a woman in its code room who was and still may be an active communist. 